Oh, we're on. Okay. <laughs> this thing, this thing, dude. Uh, I'm recording. Hello, my name's Amanda. Welcome to part four of my five-part Noisy Neighbor series. This is a second edition. Um, and I've been having technical difficulties and it gets me to, I get to practice my own thought work and fucking mood around it all. So I think it's funny because it's all this stuff that I'm talking to you guys about and teaching. And then I just get to fucking practice it all the time with you. All right. So anyways, this is take two of today's video. Hopefully one of the thoughts that I keep using to help myself through it is like, well, that was practice and this one will be better. Okay. We'll see if that's true or not. <laughs> Anyways, so this second series of the Noisy Neighbor How to Deal situation is um, based on comments that you all have left me. So I thought it'd be a cool chance to sort of take a deeper dive into the specific questions or concerns or thoughts you might have around this stuff. So today's commenter talked about, just had a really good example of a thought that I feel isn't serving them. And if you're having a, if you, it's a good illustration of just how it's our thoughts that create our feelings, not the circumstance. It's not the noisy neighbors, believe it or not. Um, and my goal with these videos is to kind of show and teach how it's our thoughts that create our feelings. So this person commented, and I'm not quoting it exactly. I don't have it in front of me, but it was something about like, it's like, you know, they listed all the ways that the neighbors were loud and obnoxious and stressing this person out. And then they said, uh, but there's nothing I can do to change it. I just have to wait for karma to take care of it. And I just thought, like, there is a world where maybe that thought is the better thought. But my sense of it from reading it was it was despairing. It felt very hopeless. It had a victim situation. It had, like, a victim role kind of in there. And I just thought, like, oh, thank you for posting that because this is an example of a thought that isn't serving you and we can do better. So, um... The, you know, you can believe in karma. That's fine. And some people take comfort in that. Like if you really feel trapped in a situation um, and you believe that somewhere justice is going to be served, there's going to be like a cosmic punishment. If that gives you comfort or relief from, say, depression or rage, then then wonderful. But I feel in this situation, it was being used in a sense of just like, I there's nothing I can do about it. It's hopeless. Um First of all, we don't even know if karma is a real thing, right? Like some people might have very strong opinions about it. Some people might even think they know for sure that it's real and it happens. Um, but we don't know for sure. So you could be waiting around for nothing. Um, even if it is real, this idea of like waiting for it to be inflicted on your neighbors, we don't know when that's going to be. And um, we also don't know how satisfied you're going to be. Like, say there is karma and say they do get like what's coming to them, you know, say this God or universe or whatever, like fucking fucks them up for being so loud and in your space. Chances are, if you were satisfied from that, it would be short term relief. And then you would find something else to be pissed off about or upset about, or there'd be new neighbors that moved in after these ones were smited or whatever. <laughs> So the point is, like, anytime we're relying on something external to fix our situation, we are going to be waiting a really long time, and it probably won't work out the way we want it to. Um, and so we can choose to be happier now if we work on our thinking around it. And that this idea of, like, we don't even know if karma is real or not, I'm using that to illustrate most of the thoughts that we are thinking we take as factual. Like, well, there's nothing I can do about this. That My only hope is some sort of cosmic justice or karma situation. Um, we're believing that, like we believe that's the only thought available to us. We believe that's the only way we are going to get through this situation. And it's just not true. We get to choose what we believe, even though it feels like it's a fact, even though we've been practicing that thought a long time, um, we can pick new ones that serve us. And another th thought I had about that, um, well, first let me say about this picking a more positive thought. I'm not talking about just positive thinking, like, um, if you just band-aid, like t just grab a positive thought, like I love my neighbors and everything is fine. And you just like stick that like a band-aid over your current negative one. It's not going to feel better. It could make you feel worse actually, because now you're trying to believe this horse shit that you don't really believe. So I am a positive thinker. I believe in changing my thoughts to change how I feel and be the creator of my own life. But I think that you have to choose thoughts that get you where you want to go and you have to choose thoughts that you can believe. And sometimes the thought 
is only slightly better than the other negative one you were thinking. You don't have to go from zero to 60. You don't have to go from, I hate my life to everything is perfect and it's exactly the way I want it. Um, that's not true. And you're going to call bullshit on yourself and it can set you back if you try that. So what I would suggest is once you've identified the thought that is feeling shitty or making you a victim in your story of your life or making you feel disempowered or helpless or whatever, name that thought, get it down on the page. Like this commenter, it was great that they left this comment because we can all see in black and white what this thought is and how, and that it's not serving this person. Pin the thought down, write it down, type it out, whatever, and then start to play with thoughts you could think instead. So like I said, don't go from everything is great and I'm super happy if that's not true for you. If that was true for you, you'd probably just go ahead and already think it, right? Like you wouldn't have to work at it. So pick something that's a little better. Like, I don't know why this is happening, but I'm sure there's some good that can come of it, right? So that feels like a little better than just waiting for karma to fix it. Um, that feels like you're getting a little bit of hope in the situation. And I feel like there's some more wiggle room into like you eventually making something good happen from the situation. I'm not at, I think this thought kind of speaks to what people think of when they are skeptical of this idea of acceptance. Like we just got to lay back and let, let things shake out the way they're going to shake out. And we just have to accept it. And we are powerless. Like I know this is kind of a nuanced distinction, but that's not the attitude I'm talking about when I talk about practicing acceptance. I'm talking about like being realistic, looking at the thing the way it is, and then choosing how to respond, choosing to move out of the situation or choose to change the situation if you can, or choose to take a proactive role in changing your attitudes about it uh, so that you can get more clarity, figure out what to do from there. I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm happy to talk about it more if you have more questions. Um, the other thought I had about karma that I thought was funny was, um, a lot of the ways that I have used a thought like that to feel better, to comfort myself was when I was thinking that it was me paying back my karma for having been the shitty loud neighbor before. <laughs> so as you know, I'm in recovery from drugs and alcohol and I used to be the drunken asshole that came home at three in the morning with people and bands and music and being really loud. I remember I had this one elderly woman who lived next to me and she could hear my alarm in the morning. I couldn't. It was right by my head. It's five in the morning. I won't fucking wake up because I'm passed the fuck out. But she can hear it in her apartment next door. And she would come and bang on my door to wake me up. And this poor thing was like, I feel so bad for her now. And so sometimes um, I could suffer my noisy neighbors with a little more grace and humor when I thought like, oh, what if this is me just burning up my karma for being that shitty neighbor before? So in that sense, that that thought can feel better. But I don't think that's what my commenter was getting at. So um yeah, I would just be really careful about believing in things that uh, are just sort of like wishy-washy and, and you know, may happen, may not, and, and who knows what's going on with that. Like, we do have uh, authorship in our lives, and I encourage you to find thoughts that uh, remind you of that. So having said all that, I wanted to leave you with an exercise that I encourage you practice. I've been practicing it, and it's helped me a great deal. Um, so when my noisy neighbors would start up, they... I, my brain would get, I would get triggered in this way where it just, I was in this like really irrational place of anger and panic and rage and discomfort. And it felt like it was always like this. It was always going to be like this. And it, it just, it was a very, um, catastrophic way of thinking. It was very black and white. Like it's always this way. And that is, that just fueled the aggravation. Right. So I started practicing, um, pushing back with reality and and what that looked like for me in this situation was to actually track when I could hear my neighbors. And what I learned from doing this experiment was that it often was for a very brief amount of time. I started to learn that, you know, sometimes they play their music really loud for like 15 minutes, maybe while they were getting ready for work or something. Or um, I had one neighbor who would play it really loud for like a half an hour at night and then it would stop. And I started to, it felt a little crazy, like, but so did how I was feeling. So I was willing to do this exercise because, um, I was willing to feel better than how I was feeling. And so, yeah, it felt a little neurotic and obsessive and weird to start to track when the, like I would keep track of it. When I heard it, I would say what time it was. And when it stopped, I would notice the time there. Um, and it just became very useful to notice like, okay, this isn't always happening. Um, this happens this time 
and I can deal with this for 15 minutes a day or not even every day, you know, like I could start to see a pattern and I could start to see it really wasn't as bad as my brain had been making it out to be. So see if that helps you. It's kind of a distraction too, like just, it, and it sort of gives your brain a feeling of like something to do, some kind of control. Um, and then if it really is as bad as, as all that, then you have like a log of when the shit is actually happening that you can give to your landlord or, or whatever. But but for me, it just helped me get some perspective and realize like, oh, this actually isn't happening that often. And when it does, it's not for that long. And I'm I'm pretty tough, pretty tough cookie over here. I can handle this. So it brought me a lot of peace. And today my neighbor's music started and I just breathed through it. And I remembered that it doesn't usually last that long. I put in my headphones. I listened to the music I wanted to listen to. And then lo and behold, 15 minutes later, it had passed and I didn't lose my shit. And I feel calm and happy and ready for the weekend. And so uh, stay tuned. I have one more video for you after this in this series. Um, I've got lots more videos and surprises for you coming up. So see you on Sunday for my final video in this series and then my big announcements that I'm excited to share with you. So thanks for being here. Take really good care of yourself. Be easy. Be gentle. These, these things are practices and you're doing a great job. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.